the day, growing media, or lack thereof, guys. We've got aeroponics, hydroponics, peat, cocoa, super soils, all kinds of stuff out there. What's inert, what is really hydro, what soil is, soil blends. A lot to look at for growing the dank, Scotty. And what, what's available to you? I mean, everything's available to people, so. They all have their pros and cons. I was thinking about it last night. I was making a list of all of them, and man, even aeroponics has its pros, you know? Hmm. For what type? Well, break it down. Aeroponics is basically your roots are suspended in air with a mist. You're having misters spray a mist on to me, which is a clone. I see application for sure. The aeroponics, the clone, uh, man, on the tip of my tongue. Easy clone. Talk about sure. Clone. <laughs> There's a bunch of them, yeah. Um, but nothing as far as full size plants or or systems. I take that back. I guess this might be aeroponics. Well, that would be bubble ponics. Is bubble ponics considered an actual one? You're bubbling? Because I have had DDC. Go ahead. Oh, you know what? I do, you know, I just put it on there. I really don't know other than cloners if anybody does aeroponics. But I thought it would be a good place to start because that's no media at all. And this maybe we can start valuing a me- the media if we think about what it does and why you would want one. Why nobody does aeroponics? It's high performance is all hell, man. High performance to a point after the fact, hard to have plant support, hard to have, you know, roots suspended in air right. with sprayers and the system. <laughs> Points of failure definitely make me paranoid as far as what can go wrong if everything's not perfect. And that's what why I wanted to start with it, because there's no buffer. And if I'm thinking of your media, the first thing it is, is a water buffer to where it can hold a little bit of water if there's a... You know, if the problem with that aeroponic sprayer it gets clogged, you're out of gas almost immediately within a half hour or so. So the first thing when I think of a quality media, I think of it being a buffer to hold nutrients, to hold water. No, yeah. I totally agree. I, yeah. <laughs> Both of us, if you know the history of the show, have gotten away from, you know, hydroponics. But there's still a lot of recently doing this show or getting the show together. Brought me back to some of the values of hydroponics and rock wool. Rock wool as a media. I know both of us have talked about on the show. We don't really prefer like deep water cultures like a race car. It has a lot of points. Again, a lot of potential theory points, a lot of investment, a lot of equipment to get. Um, but rock wool can be some of the easiest growing media. Do you agree with that or no? Curious. Yeah. I mean, it is I, when you said to me aeroponics, your you know pushback was, "Who the hell does that anymore?" And with rock wool, you know, the my initial reaction is, "Does anyone use rock wool anymore?" But there are a bunch of pros to using rock wool, man. It's you can bring a case of it in. It's probably about three foot by three foot by four foot to bring what twelve slabs in. That's pretty efficient. Fit in the back seat of your car, mm-hmm. man. Break down quickly what it is. Grodan's like the biggest player in the game. Uh, they've been doing it for like 50 years. It's made from basalt rock. And from my short Googling, there's a lot of that. Like, we don't have to worry about running out of it forever, maybe. Uh, <sighs> instead of a very high temperature, 2,900 degrees, which makes it super, like, it's inert. And I think pro growers and other growers, like, you know you're not bringing anything into your facility or your grow. You have a plate, like, plain slate to work with yeah uh, but you being a micro guy how friendly is rockwell media to microbes and not super friendly you can have it, it'll still mycorrhizae you'll still grow on the plant um there's bacteria that will still hang out in there but they're trying to live on spun rock and they're normally trying to have some kind of symbiosis with the organic material uh in the in the media so no, nah, I'm not a you know, rock wool and microbes. It wouldn't be my preferred preferred media. Got it. I used to like how easy it was though to set people up. I mean, as far yep. as the system, and again, you can agree or disagree. There's a very popular size called the Hugo blocks. I think they're six by six blocks. Yep. So you get somebody a four by four tray. You get them the right amount of blocks. You have them have one pump. Your reservoir fits right under the tray, and on a timer, it floods the tray and then goes back down to the res. That's it. My instructions from there, if you don't want a pH pen, you can use a little paper. Keep the pH within range. Change out your res once a week or top it off. And tons of people love the simplicity. No drippers, no emitters. You're relying on one pump to do your flooding. And it's pretty good success rate for new growers. Back when I worked hydro and we were selling more um, 
Rockwell and Hydro, we, we got some comments coming up. We asked the last show, why was hydroponic growing so much more popular than everything else? I think the medias we're about to cover, cocoa especially, have come a long way in the game. Yeah. Or is it- yeah, but a Rockwell is consistent, though. And if you're doing some giant commercial grow, I, I know this is a, a buzzword, but the whole crop steering thing, I've seen some articles about it, and they're always using these Hugo blocks because they're the six by six by six Rockwell blocks. Yeah, there you go. Because they can give them these tiny bursts of water, like 10 times a day or something, you know, as many times a day as it needs it. And it gives them these little micro bursts, and that's how they steer. Uh, so it's a ton of control for that. So, yeah, I see why people are still using it. Well, in our size it grows, and I don't know the degree of our listenership that can hand water their tent or me walk around my grow and hand water, setting up irrigation um, on a mass scale or for a lot of plant sites. And also the b- ability to put sensors. Um, there's a lot of uh, pulse. I'll shout out to them. Sensors into different slabs and professionally monitor all your points. Um, that's definitely another good reason to go with Rockwell. And one more, I love their clone cubes. I haven't used them in a minute, but the wrapped ones, I do have a little link here, Grambo. Um, they work great for cloning. And not so much for seed starting, but I did really like Rockwell's. They would they would stay moist for so long, especially. And then you could grow, these are 1.5 inch box. A, not a decent sized plant, but bigger than what you could grow like in a uh, little peat starter. Or whatever, right. and they're trans. You can put that into any media. You can go into your hydro system. You can go to cocoa. You can go to peat. You can go yep. into whatever from those cubes. And they so. stand up on their own. They're wrapped, so they hold moisture in there. You can actually write on the wrapper what the you know what the strain name is. So they are cool. I find <clears throat> they hold a they do hold a lot of water. You can't have them sitting in water. If you have them sitting in water, no good. But as long as you know them sitting in water, they drain to just have that perfect air to water ratio. And this is where um, a couple quick things is coming to mind. Using Rockwool is an easy to step up system as far as you have your starter cube. That can go sit right on top of your Hugo block. You want to go bigger, that block can sit right on top of a slab. No messy media to, to deal with, no heavy bags. It's really light. It's easy to work with. You have to be on top of your pH. We're not relying on living microbes like mm-hmm. we preached on the show to be like, oh, Good you know, I haven't had a pH pen in years because I use recharge. My microbes do all the work. You're going to need to be on top of your pH, whether it's in reservoir or what you're watering in uh, when growing in that type of substrate. Yeah, sorry. I'm looking ahead to your next one, man. This is this is where it's starting to get good. Now we're in the right century. Okay, dude. Go, Coco. Coco. Right, where's my Coco dog? She's around somewhere here, man. I have a dog named Coco because she's the color of just perfect core. Okay. <laughs> Piff. A few interesting facts to start off cocoa. Cocoa core, it's the outside layer of a coconut husk, or the mesocarp, um, consists mainly of coarse fibers, but also finer material known as core dust. Harvested coconuts are first soaked in water for months. I didn't know they needed that long of a soak. And this is going to be fresh water back in the day. You know, we've come a long way. They could have done salt water and things, but that does not work for us as growers. Um, that process is called redding. It's got redding. They're wrecking the cocoa. Um, and then the pith, uh, which is a, the cocoa peat and cocoa dust accounts for two thirds of the coconut pulp in millions. And I didn't know this, how long it takes. It says um, millions of tons still sit in huge piles in India and Sri Lanka, which is one of the biggest places to get it. And its decomposition rate is up to 20 years, which actually we'll get into. It can be beneficial for us as we're using it. Huh? Interesting, sir. Very cool. Hey, I can just tell you about cocoa as far as uh, I made my wife almost cry. I was I was doing the research on this and I was like, yeah, the only thing about cocoa is uh, they do they, they produce it over in Sri Lanka. And so they soak in it. I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh. They soak it in fresh water instead of giving the fresh water to the village to drink. So it's like really, you know, like the fresh water is so scarce over there and they're using it to spend, you know, to uh, soak coconuts, man. So it is a little weird. Yeah, I did, um, and they should reach out to our friends at Canna. And of course, they, they, that's the type of news that doesn't make the news. I really looked around to find out sustainability. I searched uh, cocoa soaking, cocoa water supply, cocoa. I couldn't find Jack. I know that's a concern. I don't know in all regions um, for sure. But I hear you. If you have a, an area that's scarce water for agriculture or clean drinking water, here you go. There's yeah, just- cocoa is cooking for two months. But not a can of cocoa, okay? Can of cocoa does not do that stuff, all right? 
Actually, I will tell you about can of cocoa. It is the cleanest stuff that I've ever used. I've been trying to use things for years on uh, uh, in my real bucket system. And I just talked to Mike, the can of rep, and Chet. And I think I'm going to get a pallet of canna because it's the only thing that's worked. Yeah, it's definitely clean, consistent, which is another thing like growers like rock wool. The consistency in Canada has always been there because if you were growing in the early 2000s, late 90s, and when cocoa started coming on the scene, there was a lot of different options that when some bags would be like, dude, this is like killing my plant. Yeah. No more these days as far as any cocoa product you're getting, unless you're going like on Alibaba or some crap, going to the grow store. It's going to be buffered. It's going to be washed for you. It's going to be ready to use out of the I disagree. Those blocks of cocoa you can get at the grocery store are crap. They're not properly buffered. buffered. They're not properly washed. So just most cocoa out there is crap. Which grocery store? How do we find them? I'm just kidding. I was just saying all <laughs> those blocks that you get. I've tried almost every cocoa on the market. Okay. Mother Earth what about works. These blocks? What about these blocks, baby? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm getting a pallet of, and that's what I'm going to start including in the real bucket system because that's These are the- about almost a 50 liter bag. This is 40 liter of cocoa. You guys can get that right off Amazon. Of course, support your local grocery store, but if you don't have access to quality cocoa where you're at, this is the way to go. Yeah, um, and that's another thing, by the way, is cocoa. Anytime you have a media that you've got to go to the grocery store and buy a big bag of or seven or eight big bags of it, that's a big consideration. Hey, I might not be able to fit them in my car. <clears throat> Got me thinking because I used to work grow store a bit. If I if it's my grow store, I'm not selling anything on the shelf that isn't that's going to harm your plants or not be ready to go. I'm going to be testing the cocoa. Um, you sold right, those bricks of cocoa, right? The cheap bricks of cocoa, no name brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah they don't perform day, well, uh, man. There's maybe no, to no. cut something with to put twenty percent in your soil to lighten it up. Hey, Grandpa, what did you find here, man? This is good. Yeah, it's just a cocoa, uh, uh, Canna's recommendation on reusing cocoa. It's one of those things I've always heard about. Like, I had a buddy that swore by it, and he's like, sometimes oh, yeah. your, your fifth or sixth run ends up <clears throat> being your best. And I never really processed that, but here Canna's breaking it down real, real good. Anything compacts and breaks down after a while and loses its aeration, but you can definitely reuse cocoa. And then the amount that you're shaking off, you're losing some. So you're putting fresh cocoa in there. Every and they time. just point out the that you really want to focus in on those enzymes. They have their particular enzyme they recommend, but any of those uh, hardcore enzymes will work just to break down some of that organic matter. There you go. Just to give a tip and ask your gro- well, I'm talking with growers here, um, I, the reusing the cocoa and the enzymes and all that. I don't, well, Grandpa, I put a root ball here and it says soil seed and root ball. So when I pull out a root ball, of a two gal, three gal, five gal, when I'm done, it is solid ass roots. And I'm like, I know there's good cocoa up in there, but getting it, you know, the cocoa separated. Really? Trying to do some research. You yeah, don't go I mean, punch your root balls at the end, man. <laughs> Just go in there. Yeah, I, you go punch them, man. You wait till you know you come outside at night and you cry and you just punch the root. No, seriously, I have a technique where I'll hold the stem and I'll kick it and I'll kick it over this big tub. And as I do, all the you know, a lot of the cocoa comes out, and you're left with just this roots, man. It's pretty cool. And then, by the way, those go in the trash really easy as well. How oh, that duck? Uh, you see that soil seed? Yeah, show that link just to give a tip, man. Have you're so you civilized, can. man. <laughs> I'm punching and kicking mine, and you're screening it. All right, all right. Using one of those over uh, like a 30 gal or tra- trash can or whatever will help out as far as, and you can make this easy guys if you have any, you know, basic skills. Um, but Coco, again, to touch on, it's super reusable because of its uh, <laughs> lignin, lignin, lignin content, 45% lignin, which that's why it decompresses slowly. Um, so it's really a, good in that sense. A couple more w- pros we didn't touch on microbe home. What about Coco now? We talked about rock wool. Um, it's a pretty good one. Not as good as Pia. Excellent. It's still, it'll work out. Excellent. It comes loaded with microbes. It comes loaded with trichoderma, or at least it should. Uh, trichoderma colonizes all over cocoa core, and uh, that's what makes it part of what makes it a great media. But yeah, loves microbes, man, because it's organic material. The microbes can do that exchange there. They can hang out on there. Uh, what about we didn't touch on the first pro that everybody should like the excellent air to water ratio and i found a cool pick here easy to see when to water grambo um i talk about it on the show a bit but this pick really kind of showed where you just you know peek in your grow or look in your grow tent 
You can see the different color. And when it gets dry, it waters in great still. It doesn't get hydrophobic. It's easy to water in. It shows its color well as far as... Um, Grandma, did you see that link at the top under pros? And that fancy word hydrophobic just means that like when you get some things too dry, like peat, it'll just roll off the sides of it. Like it doesn't really want to... Uh, uh doesn't want to re-wet cocoa is definitely different it's got nice air to water ratio and it re-wets very that's, nicely that's what i wanted to show that pic- picture there you can i mean it looks somewhat there you go you zoom in on the dry zoom in on the wet it's easily two different shades to tell you when it's time to water and in between it even has an in-between which they don't show where it gets splotchy and I can go into my grow and be like you know what there's some dry spots and some wet spots so I can water but if I want to get away one more night without it I don't have to. You so gotta stick your finger in it, man, and wiggle it around a little bit, man. And there's a few ways to water cocoa. You are going to water more frequently, ideally, than any of the other medias. We'll talk about peat, super soil. Um, it can perform. You can cyclically water up to six, seven times a day. I water it once a day, um, but more fertigation. Is that the right word? Just fertigation means watering with nutrient, no? Fertigation, doesn't that mean? Uh, fert- I thought that meant foliar. No? Fertigate? Oh, Rambo, prove me right. Thought, prove me right on fertigation. Yeah, I haven't I said that word in a while, man. Yeah, <laughs> here we go. Oh, shoot, man. There you go. Micro sprinkler or drip system. So fertigation is just right. irrigating, man. Automatic irrigation. There you go. Uh, I tell you what. Uh, again, man, with that crop steering stuff, and I, I read this paper about it. I'm going to do a short form about it. But uh, all it is is just giving it a little bit of water at a time in veg or giving it a lot of, or a lot of water, but allowing it to dry back between waterings in flower. So if you are doing that kind of stuff, um, you have something like cocoa, you need like a real steerable media. I'll give it some cons, though. I'll give it a few cons. It's not, and I don't have all the science on this. It's not your best choice. If you're doing living soil mm-hmm. or full organic amendments, I mean, peat is a better home. Like my, well, one microbes, it's probably their favorite home and living, you know, living microbes to help out what you have going on in a living soil. If you're growing organically, I'm going to go with peat as we transition to peat here. If I'm growing in cocoa, just to talk about nutrition, go cocoa specific, go cocoa specific nutrient. Like that's what I mentioned earlier, Anna Coco A and B. There's a few others out there, but if you have that medium, go with the, the other, you know, you can run a GH3 part, you can run some basic nutrition, but it's nice to go with cocoa specific nutrition and a cocoa medium that's going to have what, a, a little bit more on the only cocoa, uh, different and more CalMag and less potassium because cocoa is loaded with potassium naturally. So as it breaks down, it releases potassium. More cow mag. Where's the bell? Where's the bell? More. Where's my shirt? And more cow mag. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I'll hit on that note before we go to Pete. Quick shout out because you said, Where's my shirt? Just on the fly. Dank weed teas. Yeah, uh, right on. All over there. Um, hook it up. And uh, Dale will hook you up with some shirts. Some great, I think, coupon code dude. Coupon code dude at dankweedtees.com. You can get yourself a cherry Paloma hoodie, such nice. as JR has. And then also, uh, coming on board here, big sponsor of the show, a cool product and people behind it, Lost Post Plant Therapy. Uh, I wanted to feature today. Dude, this simple 12 ounce bottle does 12 gallons of end spray, ready to take care of powdery mildew, fungus gnats, all the mites. I don't care if you got broad, you got rust, you got hemp, you got spider mites, uh, aphids, thrips. Great product, ready to go. It's basically a natural product that is going to have some essential oil. It's got peppermint citric acid, a soybean oil, um, and has that fresh minty smell when you go back into your growth. That's <laughs> all really, really good, actually. DGC approved, guys. DGC approved by some good growers in the crew. Shout out, Sufa, JR. Uh, LostCoastPlantTherapy.com. Coupon code DUDE will hook you across 20, 20% off, baby. So go get yourself some good IPM from Lost Coast. Sorry, Grambo, you have to put the more cowbell back, right? We all have to give our best imitation. <laughs> yeah. Come on, ready? as soon as you say more cow mag, yeah. one face pops into my head. Come on, ready? I'll do. What you need there? <laughs> you need more cow mag. <laughs> I can't do it. Come on, you do it. You got a walk it's hard. Yeah, yeah, I always just go like, yeah, you're talking to me all wrong. I'm gonna stick a screwdriver in your cocoa. Yeah, you you, you got too much potassium. What you need is more cow mag. Nah, I can't do it. We got no walking. <laughs> 
How about him? He won't come to the DDC Cup, man. He's too big, man. Ric Flair, yes. Has anyone made any headway with that? Anyhow, man, get Ric Flair to show up to the cup. We're supposed to be stalking him online. I don't know. We'll know. We'll little here in the cup. I don't think so. I'll just say I don't think we've made much headway. <laughs> okay. We tried. Not really. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the Ric Flair drip. That's his edibles. That's just so cool. The R- fact that it's called the Ric Flair drip is ridiculous. They're called- he's known for being jacked <laughs> his, up and his, saying, "Woo!" His edibles are called Woo Chews. <laughs> <laughs> Woo Chews. <laughs> ah. <laughs> he was big back in the day, wasn't he, man? He's- NWA champion, man. All right, he's still big. Um, let's take it a peek, man. man. This is what I've started in. This is my first growing media ever. You know, everybody, it's a grower. I won't say everybody, but you probably wrestled those bales, those big old bales of pro. Yeah. Bales. Um, and it is a good growing media. I don't know if I'd start with talking about, is it sustainable or not? Or should we get into the growth aspects? Yeah, the growth uh, aspects. I find it my least favorable growing media because if you don't water really? it enough, it's hard to re-wet the water. When that's the kind of, uh, when it's dry, you ever have those plants that you try to re-wet and the water rolls off the side. <laughs> like I said, so yeah, you're really patient, water it a little bit at a time. It doesn't handle abuse really well. Like cocoa, you can let those plants be super dry and they'll still stay turgid yeah I think yeah. Humor, man. <laughs> and one. and then um you know you can re-wet it really easy and peat also stays too wet when it's fully saturated Kogo still has some uh it has a nice air to water ratio rock wool has a nice air to water ratio Kogo gets wet man and stays wet i mean i'm sorry peat stays wet man which one? I don't know if there's the right answer here. I'd say, which one would you recommend to a grower, a new grower? Go go. Like to me, it depends. I ask what 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 your nutrient, what's your nutrition going to be? You know, I have cocoa with grow dots myself. If I'm going, like I said earlier, I'm going to use a liquid organic or organic amendment, such as my five gals that are in a peat mix. I use the uh, oh, I forgot the name of the damn organic. I'm using just like a, a bloom purpose organic. Um, powder which is some blood meals uh, rock salt ph- phosphate all that jazz I, i'm going straight to peep from if, if that's my growth style or mix the two i have done that mixing them 50 50 yeah uh, <laughs> that's very popular 30, 70 really helps take away that hydrophobic aspect of it and you can still get away with doing a living soil and you can add more potential air air ratio with cocoa in your peat mix and there's already some that are blended too i know pro mix has a blend uh, right will do not just core but they'll do the bigger cocoa chunks in their peat mix to help provide aeration in their mix. So that's pretty cool as well. What's the classic one? Perlite and vermiculite. It's got a you know, peat, perlite, vermiculite to lighten it up. Mm-hmm. I thought I thought that's what they used to be. And if you're buying um, a consistent quality brand, I see you have a note here. It should already they, they add, I believe, some lime and some of them a basic starter nutrition for like seed starting in the first week or two of growth. Um, don't buy it a ton of times in the store. Don't just go to Home Depot and buy the, the low end brand of peat. I've gotten some horrible peat that way. That is just, mm, you're going to have to do a lot of work to it. We'll say it's not ready. You're going to have to mix this in. You have to add, you know, lime it. You're going to have to get the pH right because peat's acidic by nature before it is, you know, put right. proper pH. We want more to neutral. But sunshine number four, and maybe that's only in Florida, but uh, a pro mix, though, you can buy those in bales over at Home Depot. And uh, those are to- two legitimate brands. I mean, man, I don't know. Per my experience, I don't know. Sunshine. I haven't bought Sunshine Mix number four in, in a while, but it is going to be the, the most common media available to you if you don't have a grocery store, which a lot of people don't. We are getting less and less. But at your local nursery, they should carry a good quality yeah. peat. Be careful, man. Some of that stuff sitting out on pallets, though, it makes me mm. want to bring it into my grow. Remember, we just have fungus nursery. gnats, have fungus gnats just flying all over it when you'd grab it off the store, you know, outside. Yeah. I've done what else. Let me give a couple hey. just interesting facts, dude. How yes, it's more sustainable it grows slow. It says it goes um, about a one millimeter, one eighth of an inch spread per year. Uh, but we're only as far as creating even a, a, a part or four to six inch. Uh, spread on that and then it's but we are using this is where i question sustainability so we're leaving, we're using less than one percent currently of the world's supply of peat most of it's a lot of it's in canada so even though it takes thousands of years to make and we're no. using less than one percent of it now go ahead 
You got a big point there, man. There's a difference in peats. Canadian peat is the cream of the crop. Uh, Florida peat is very inexpensive. And uh, by the way, peat bogs are, it's a bog, man. It's this thing I used to drive by when I uh, was visiting one of Tripp's groves in the middle of nowhere. And there was just this big machine cutting the earth. And I was like, what are they doing? You know, you always ask, what the hell is that machine and what is it doing? And it was cutting out just chunks of peat. Hey, just in these big chunks, man, it was a peat bog. But Florida peat is way uh, uh, inferior to Canadian peat. And when I used to get my soils built, uh, they would be like, what do you want? You know, you want 10% Florida peat, you want 10% Canadian peat. They'll design anything you want. And the Canadian peat is cream of the crop. Man. The news, 81% of virgin Canadian peat is untouched so far. And if you have a shortage... At your grocery store or your nursery, don't be like, oh, we're running out. It's not sustainable. I didn't, there's only a 30 to 40 day window for them to harvest peat in the summer. And if they have too much rain or too much issues, there's going to be a shortage because they can't put their equipment out in the bog. So I didn't know that. That's pretty interesting stuff. Yeah, it's almost like pre-coal, isn't it? It's like this organic material and material and it's pressurized. It's just pressurized organic material. And it's like if it were to have more pressure and more time, it would become coal. But instead, it's like this pre-coal kind of peat stuff, man. Uh, under the right conditions, peat transforms into coal through carbonization. Mm. Grandma, you're all right. Yeah, same thing By that uh, creates diamonds as well. So it goes from peat to debt to diamonds. Oh, yeah, man. You got oh. a business plan there, man. Get that URL. All right, we got some enriched soil coming up, but I did want to talk quickly in short review. If you're in cocoa, plan on watering more and more frequently. If you're in peat, you're going to be able to get away with less. You might have a watering schedule, depending on environment, root size, all that jazz of once every three to four days. I can maybe do that. Maybe. It depends. Again, cocoa. Every time I use cocoa, I'm almost, well, I'm watering just about every single day. And so, cocoa. That's, yeah, they, they, cocoa is the one that works really well in sip buckets, too. It uh, just has a great wicking ability. And while it wicks, it can hold a bunch of air as well. So. That's why we use it in sip buckets. Yeah. Well, let's take a moment to give a real growers shout out, man. Speaking of uh, medias and nutrition, you got a comment here. You want me to take it or? Yeah, take it, man. This is, I thought this would be a good time. Uh, real growers recharge, of course, my soil micro product. Yeah. And what I'm super excited about is the grow dots. People are having success with them. They're showing off their grows. My motto is to make growing easy. The more people we get can get engaged in this hobby, go deeper into it from there. But you can grow really good cannabis with these two products, man. Well, you got at John. Keyhole 8368. Hey, hey, y'all. Question. Can I use grow dots with a potting mix that is soilless and already has food in it? So what would that be like? I'm talking box farm. Are we talking? Yeah, I think we talk, you know, we forgot about those. The enriched mixes like Fox Orange Farm organic. Ocean Forest. Um, I guess uh, Fox Farm Ocean Forest. Does that have organic components in it or is it just got a little yeah. bit of a synthetic? No, it, does. Like it, it does. A little bit of guanos, rock phosphate type stuff. Okay. Uh, there it's you like go. the Roots Organics. Shout out to Roots Organics, actually. When they we first started carrying that in the grocery store, we were like, this is so a camouflage bag. And at first we thought it was just for style. I'm like, no, dude. Like people put this shit all over out in the hills of Cali. Like, why not? Yeah, you leave a pallet there. Yeah. Totally. That totally makes sense. So go ahead. How I'm curious too, because you have a regular rate to mix into, let's say, an inert media. Right. You just cut the rate down depending on how enriched your soil is. No, don't do it. Just uh, if you want to use an enriched soil, use an enriched soil. Um, or if you want to use grow dots, that is your nutrition. So you don't need to combine them. And it's all designed uh, to release the right amount of nutrition in the beginning and then to go into bloom. So if you mix it in with this other stuff, it's just kind of uh, a meatball sundae. <laughs> you like that? Yeah. I've, Thank you very much. I'll have to. I like both those things, <laughs> but they don't go good together. Okay. So, and by the way, the enriched soils are more expensive. If you're going to use grow dots, just use an inner cocoa. And uh, yeah, if you want to put, I used to put a couple handfuls of earthworm castings in there just to richen it up a little bit, but that's all you need. I like it. I like it. I uh, Next up here, a shout out realgrowers.com. Hey. Um, hook, hook it up over there, guys. Get your dots. Get your recharge. 
I actually have some more questions for you, Scotty. We'll continue it on another show about the grow dots. I just got done with my first like grow at scale uh, before it only grown one plant in the dots. And now I've grown 17 and one grow in the dots. And it was interesting to see how different phenos react to, to, to nutri- uh, nutrition. Yeah. The one thing I will say is I've been looking, I wish I knew where it was. Um, man, there's some, I believe his name is Orlando. I, pro- I, I will do more Talking research. About getting the biggest. Whoa. Oops, whoa. Man. <laughs> but he made this growing with grow dots, Facebook group. Oh yes, yes, yes. And it's awesome. Yeah. It did is you, did awesome. you actually there. find it? I did. Okay. And I started yeah. commenting this morning right. and there are just so many people having success with it there and they're all helping each other. It is so cool. Man. I'll say I'm personally using the dot system and the emergency. Emergency, yeah, it's looking amazing. So shout out. It's working right. great. I turned oh, it into a I Grow Dots commercial. <laughs> Growing with Grow Dots, Orlando Martinez on Facebook. Shout out. Very cool, man. I'm still gonna do switch. Other people are gonna are gonna agree with me. I want some bloom dots. Bring me the bloom dots. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm thinking about including can of cocoa in the in the system, you know, just to, as a you know, just to keep anything, you know, all the components in there. And I felt guilty calling uh, Kyle, Warehouse Kyle, and being like, dude, what if I brought in another product? You know, because it's just more warehousing, more shipping. So I'm very, and there's a lot of work that goes into launching any product. <clears throat> so right now, I've just got this system of got the buckets. I've explained to you how to, you know, when to grow them, when to, when to flip them. And the size of the plant is right. It doesn't take too long. You can harvest every three months. Uh, so I'm happy just promoting that system now. Grow that's commercial. Oh, warehouse Kyle, you're, <laughs> you're actually getting um, a container full of totes of cocoa that he has to repack it. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> Inside and bald. Hi, guys. We like busting, busting uh, warehouse Kyle's chops a little. Um, I wanted to hit uh, the pre-enriched quickly. We mentioned there's there's a bit out there. I don't know all the brands off the top of my head as far as pre-enriched means. You're going to the store. You're getting a bag of soil. That is ready to go. It's water only. Um, yep. I know in Michigan, there's a couple of brands. It's kind of geographical because it's not as cheap to ship soil around. And I do like that, man. It can be complicated for some people as far as, you know, figuring out, okay, I got to get this dry amendment or not even complicated. I should say it's pretty easy to get a recipe these days and mix stuff up. But maybe you just don't want that labor or to deal with it. Go ahead. Yeah, I've never used these before because I've always been a nutrient guy, you know, bottled nutrient or or with the dots. But do they run? And my worry would be that they would run out of juice or that they wouldn't have enough for the whole harvest. Can you just open up a bag of Fox Farm Ocean Forest, plant in it, and get through harvest and with it ninety days or something like that, or does it run out? I don't know. You can't. I've seen people. I've had shit got real all of a sudden, man. Yeah, I seem like us talking about cocoa. Uh, to the grow store and they're like, yeah, we just use the roots organic soil to whole grow. And I'm like, really? That worked? Like, did you have deficiencies? And it's going to be, you know, plant strain dependent to a degree. And you are going to succeed as much as if you have, you have the grower's eye to know at what points to add in some things, you know, maybe yeah. in room you want to add a yeah. little phosphorus. Um, but watch it. Watch what the uh, requirements are. Um, I just searched one Google water only soil. You know, Gaia Green has one. That's actually the organic nutrient I was using. Um, but I feel like you said for a, a nine, potentially nine to 10 week flowering strain, you're going to, yeah, start to lose out towards the end for sure. Unless um, super easy, quick shout out, like Build a Soil has these kits. So you can go to your local nursery, local grow store, and you get a, some plain peat, and then you just throw in the Build a Soil soil building kit. Coot approved. Shout out to OG Coot. Is Coot still around? I don't know, man. <clears throat> Clackamas Coot. But hey, this is a little bit different in my opinion because this is, uh, first off, Jeremy designed it and there's a bunch, I guess it's not super different, just Jeremy designed it, but it's a bunch of slow release organic components that break down over time and whether it's the size of the, you know, of the whatever kernel or grain, whatever the heck it is, uh, but it's a uh, it's supposed to slow release. And I do trust that somebody like Jeremy would know his stuff. Well, it takes all the guesswork out. Like in the description here, it even has, okay, do you have a, do you want a 2.2 cubic foot bale kit, a 3.0 cubic foot bale kit, a 3.8? So what you got to do is go buy that bale, have a place to mix it up, guys. It is, if you're, if you're just as a go tip, back to that up a God love Build a Soil, but that's $758.99, man. 
Yeah, he's out. Well, this is for the Clackamas Coot, like take and bake specialty thing. Oh, Clackamas Coot's got to get his, uh, you know, his bake, right? <laughs> and you're not factoring in free shipping, Scott. Oh, there is free shipping costs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Oh, by the way, and dude, organic weed tastes really good. Uh, so if you, yeah, I got no problem with investing in this. How much That's is it? It's got to be a show. bunch, right? Yeah, you get you, you get a whole, but you get pretty much everything. All right, all right. Yeah. That'd be another show about the organic weed thing. I don't know if I like. I want to believe it. Like, okay, I'm growing the same strain as you. We're growing the same clone. I used an A and B product and nothing else, and you used the same no A&B microbes. Product. No um, microbes. Well, yeah. Yeah, I'm always using microbes. For That's sure. a big difference. Microbes put an organic layer around those roots and in that rhizosphere. So it's very different and, than just growing I'm bare wire. About it. Inputs like we'd say fish rings the day, you know, or if you're watering in a different type of, you know, of organic amendment or making a tea, some FPJs, bro. But castings, I would just put a little bit of the cheap earthworm castings in. And I did like it. It just seemed that I changed the consistency of the pure cocoa for a little while. But I'm not afraid of putting some organic components in there. Just some comments, guys. It's an ongoing debate. You know, I don't want to say is organic weed taste better than non-organic weed. Oh, shoot, but, man. <laughs> you just started it, bro. <laughs> like, let us know in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> you just started it, bro. I'm going to shout out here, man. I'm going to shout out to some EGC producers, guys. You have been making this show happen, man. We're coming up on our 10-year anniversary, April 23rd, actually. Scotty found the date, man. The date of- hey. Oh, wow. It's very cool, and, man. Man, without the crew, this would uh, not be here. We would not be here. Grandma wouldn't be working the boards, hanging out. So let's shout out a couple of these cats, like now that I understand who Terpy Dabshaw is and what That's it's awesome. making fun of. That's <laughs> Uh, what's up, buddies? Well, Skoden, Skoden, OG. Man, I gotta ask Rambo, where did you find a, what is that line over the O? I don't know what it's called in this from must be. Oh, the umlaut. Umlaut, huh? Yes. Where did you find an umlaut on the keyboard? Uh, they have someone. <laughs> uh, umlaut. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. 85. And now it's so sad that I don't know whether that's the year they graduated or the year they were born. That's how old I am. Probably okay. born. <laughs> Say it again. Probably born. Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, give it up to sleep with Sativa. Sleeps with Sativa. All right. Okay. Another thing I want to talk about the show. Is there anything really such a thing as Sativa and Indica? I don't. They're all hybrids, man. They're all hybrids. Man. Why'd you have said everybody? <laughs> <laughs> There's no such also- thing as organic Sativas. <laughs> grow and mow and oh, I grow. What's yeah. going on? Guys? We've had a, a laugh. We've upped your grow game. Realgrowers.com forward slash support. You're missing out on BND DC. 30% off all real growers products, uh, as well as hot giveaways, sticker packs, right? When you sign up, you got free seed packs and seeds here now. EGC Cup, 20% off your tickets, man. June 1st competitors. Man, I think it's sold out. There might be like three spots left. I think we have like 75 competitors, uh, as well as everybody that comes as a judge, guys. Everybody gets a custom DDC one hitter and a lighter. DDCCup.com. If you are a producer or you plan on coming to the cup, go to dudegrows.com forward slash support. Sign up. Get your coupon code. It's listed on the recent post and hook it up, guys. We want to see you June 1st. It's a great networking event and a great place to get genetics. Oh, yeah. Jones, meet the breeders, uh, all kinds of stuff. We've upped the tent size twice, Scotty. I can't up it anymore. (laughs) Ravensdale Farms says, well, you can't fit a bigger tent, dude. Okay. That's awesome. Max. I want to be under the tent, yo. Hey, one thing we, we didn't touch on is yeah. uh, aeration, by the way. And just aeration, you can, all these soils, they can get heavy. It is easy to just add. My favorite is perlite. I think it's expanded shale. Isn't that, uh, don't they just pop shale or something like that? Yeah. And Grambo, you are just on fire <laughs> today. All right. But perlite is a good one. Um, they got the lava rock. What is it? A granulated material? Expanded volcanic glass wow. heated to a thousand Celsius until it pops like popcorn. Wow. A thousand degrees Celsius. It's lightweight, thorough, and easy to handle. 
the people at home, just behind the scenes. Scotty's got his grandbo there, throwing <laughs> some info up for him. Ah, yeah, he goes into I'm the spoiled. he goes into the bakery, sits down, calls dude. You ready? Let's go. <laughs> all, yes. all Scotty has to do is sit down. And I, I literally set up my studio space and I take it down and I'm not recording because fearful. Everybody comes in this room to grab weed. My kid's going to knock my camera ah. over, trip on a cord. I don't know. So I just right. have to look. All right. I look back because I have to turn the lights on too, man. All right. <laughs> it's funny because I'll come here on. and set up everything. And then at home when I record, I ask my roommate, hey, man, will you set this shit up for me? I don't want to do it. <laughs> Grambo, you are awesome at what you do, sir. We didn't mention on uh, Coco. Um, I won't speak for all cocos. I don't use any perlite in my can of cocoa. It's not necessary. It really depends on your schedule with irrigation. How often do I know Ross and Jeff? I think does a thirty percent. Plenty of brands come mixed seventy thirty. I think. Yep. Um, they want that aeration. I don't need that aeration. I'm not watering that frequently, and I don't find it to give any any benefit to me, if you will. Not that it for my style. That is. Uh, yeah, I've used oh. with and without, and I'm going to try, try to use a can of cocoa just pure because I'd like to not have to include perlite. Well, and well. if you don't need that aeration, the perlite uh, doesn't do CEC. The, it hurts the CEC of the plant, so you don't want to you don't want to add it unless you actually need it. Cat iron exchange capacity. Uh, Grambo is loving the abbreviations. Today, <laughs> well, CEC. <see, it's> not- <laughs> yeah. um, I see. I have a note maybe in summary here. Like I look at so rock wool and cocoa. You get the most control for watering, and it's the most. It's going to be the most inert out of all of them, right? Compared to peat, um, and for me, that's I'm looking at those mediums. If I'm wanting more of a, I'm more in control. I'm probably growing with a synthetic nutrient. I'm not organic living soil based. That's where I'm getting more into my soils, the premixed soils, the peat. Um, so that's one of the main things for me to consider on which media I'm going to pick and how often you want to water, guys. If you're watering by hand. Um, it's harder to overwater cocoa, but it's going to need it more than all the other medias. Yeah, cocoa does lend itself to drippers as well. You can put some drippers on there and keep it evenly moist. Why'd you name your dog Coco? Is it after the media? Yes, it is. So it happens when I'm driving home and I'm out of cocoa. I need to buy some too, but I just got a dog. <laughs> well, um, I'm going to tell you uh, guys and gals listening, subscribe. Subscribe to the channel, guys. It's a great way to help us grow the show. And to be notified, man, be notified when we got some content coming out. Sometimes some goofy things are going on with the algorithms and the systems and whatever the heck they are with them in the Internet. So I'm really sounding dated here. But subscribing to the show lets you know what we're up to, when shows come out uh, and how to catch up. What are there something we could do to the algorithm to make us like us a little bit more? Well, you know, just time. You know. Yeah, it, they, they have been a little uh, bit nicer in some ways and way we, worse than a lot of other ones. We tried dude not wearing a shirt under the robe. I mean, we tried <laughs> a lot of stuff, man. You know, I even put up a video just to, as a dude grows short. I don't know if anyone saw it. I put a dank nug up and I put tomatoes in it. And I called them YouTube tomatoes. Ah, and I was like, hey, oh. we're here growing YouTube tomatoes to see. It dinged it. It took it down. Oh, but even with that, I thought I was tricky. Oh, there you are. Uh, remember Jamaican tomatoes? They, yeah. They'd sell tomatoes. You'd hang them on your tree uh, outside. Uh, that's what I was trying to make. I was using that, and I was going to call it YouTube tomatoes. Oh, that's funny. They, bro. Oh, they caught me. It was good stuff, brother. Grandpa, you're probably on top of your game, but it's like I get Slightly, I see a live and an orange explanation point right now. Oh, <laughs> are we good? Oh, yeah, we're we're good. Oh man, see, are we live? If you were dude? subscribed, <laughs> if we were subscribed, you'd accidentally know when we went live. All right, so let's take it to a comment here. Um, when we were talking, we asked for why hydro was so popular back in the day. Like I said, when I first started working uh, retail hydro stores, sold a ton of rock wool, sold systems, sold eight packs, of water farms, flood and drain, ebb and flow, all that jazz. So this was a seat and sniffer. Whoa. Seat, sniffer, seat sniffer. Seat sniffer. Seat sniffer 91. 91. Wait, now that's a fetish, Grambo? That's that a what fetish, that is? baby. Can you imagine getting caught doing that? You know? All right, it's cool. Whatever you okay. think, man. Whatever you think, it's fine. <laughs> it just smells good. Sorry, it smells good. Natural, natural musk. <laughs> musk. <laughs> Dude. Why does that make it worse? I don't, I don't know, know why. It makes it way worse. <laughs> so, seat sniffer, 
The focus on hydro in the 90s and early 2000s stems from the Dutch agricultural industry. They have been in the forefront of using hydro and tech for big ag for decades. This is this is correct. I believe that's the Rodan space. And it came out of, um, this is even backed by Kyle Cushman versus Aron. Ar- Arjan, isn't that how you say his name? He's Arjan? the greenhouse. Uh, yeah, the greenhouse guy, man. Hmm. Interesting. So Kyle grew in soil and Arjan, I'll go with, grew in hydro. Oh, yeah. He's Greenhouse a, seeds. He's man. one of the strain, strain hunter, hunter guys. guys. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Respect. Love strain hunting. I Googled this last night. I was like, I know that guy from somewhere. Yeah. Oh, he's not one of the ones that passed away or not being respectful, is it? No. I, I want he's, to he's still alive. He's still kicking. But it's Toby Keith. <laughs> he just posted no, for it. It was. Um, man, how maybe it was that we know we we didn't get genetics. Um, and the Dutch were looked at as like that's what Dutch nutrients, can of nutrients, you know, rock wool. I guess maybe that all stems from yeah, the agricultural industry over in the Netherlands and the weed growing from Amsterdam before it gained mainstream here. So, good point. I mean, if they're doing a lot of this stuff, if they are growing in rock wool, you know, they're growing their vegetables or tomatoes or whatever they're doing, um, that there is a lot of tech. Um, you can tell I read this article in Crop Steering uh, over the weekend and it was Steering weekly. Yeah, it's crop steering. No, but it was mostly daily. about the cycl- cyclical <laughs> irrigation and about just giving a little burst of irrigation of low EC, low uh, PPM water uh, frequently, though. And then you do it less frequently with more dry back as you're as you're in the flower. And that's stuff that the Dutch learned. The, the crop steering article, the, the definitive one that I saw was from Rockwell, from so sorry, from Grodan rather. Yeah. And, and then for me, crop steering is it's I don't want to dumb it down, but don't be intimidating. It's just watering, like you said, frequency, and it can be a different type of theory for everybody. But I guess the idea is to have the ultimate performance. I made it two sentences. I can describe crop steering in two sentences. Yep. yep. In veg, water more often, but less volume and less PPM and keep it more humid and more uh, and a little bit hotter like the summer. You're simulating the summer uh, in flowering, simulate the fall. So you're going to a little bit cooler and a bit less humidity. And by the way, they, you can look at the VPD charts and it shows you all this stuff. Go to pulse.com uh, and you're watering a little bit less frequently, a little bit higher PPM and you're allowing a dry back. That dry back is the stress. I think there's urban legend about this. You know, you want to stress your plants a little bit in flower and allow a bit of a dry back. That's the deal with it, man. It stresses the plant and all we're trying, it knows it's going to die. So it's trying to just push out more terpenes and cannabinoids to get, you know, something to come over and, uh, and spread that seed. Let's see. All right. Let's oh, yeah. get me to the new, not the new, put the fall prohibition on an organ here. Cause I got to have, you guys explain to me what's going on in this picture. With Oregon facing the rampant public drug use, lawmakers, lawmakers backpedal on pioneering discrimination and discrimination law. We're looking at that's a, that is sadness. I don't know. That is sadness. I, I don't know. I'm guessing heroin or something on there that they're. No, there's it, smoking resin. Remember? <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's resin. <laughs> just, it's like just, black tar. Or, I have no idea, just, man. Just smoking some resin. Uh, but anyway, this was just something. Yeah, man, this is, we got a little bit of culture in this show. It is interesting. Oregon didn't, Oregon didn't experiment where they decriminalized all drugs because they were just, you know, somebody with a drug habit. It cost a lot of money to put them in jail and it was uh, not helping anything. So I think they tried to put uh, money towards, you know, other programs programs to try to help these folks and it just didn't work man and now they have to backpedal on it and try oh, wow. uh yeah they're you know recriminalizing that and i guess you get a ticket and have to go to court but it's damn that's uh, a bummer i was really bullish on it i was hoping that like they're using it in europe they're showing results so i was excited that this might yield some results looks like it didn't since they're going to recriminalize possession of small amounts of drugs enabling police to confiscate them and crack down use on their sidewalks and in parks you know, it's such a complicated issue as far as you, you see it. There are plenty of places where if you're out, whatever, by yourself, I don't care if you're out with the fam or whoever, where public drug use can be like, what, what's going on? Yeah. I might hear right now in front of yeah. this business or this place. Are you uh, shooting it up? 
more of uh, having, you know, safe. This has been going on forever. I mean, me and Scotty were out here in Vancouver, East Hastings Street in 19, 2004. And it's the first time before the even show Walking Dead was out. I, I was like, hey, this is like, what's happening? Walking Dead. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was, was 20 years ago. 20 years ago. Still not figured out. So part of me feels there's some conspiracy theory to it. But that's not this show. Um, and yeah. Huh. Yeah. Huh. We need safe. We need safe access. We need places for people to use drugs. It's not going anywhere, right? We no. know that. It's always been around. So, yeah, it's a happiness problem. Uh, all right. Well, let's keep the show happy. And all right, so you. Uh, um, we'll have to hear out from Jr. Jr. is a man in the scene in Florida. We'll, we'll get a hold of him and see what's. Yeah, up. right. I'll make it. Yeah, I'd be interested. Listen, DVC merch. Merch, merch is happy. You can get yourself. Yeah. You guys want to look a little better. You want to look slick at the DDC Cup? Actually, bring some funds to the DDC Cup. We're going to have some good merch there. I'm getting glass made, baby. I'm getting bring like, your cash. Hey, DGC spoons made. Um, custom. Uh, Stephen Baker, guys. This is, again, how we work with the show. Shout out to Noah from Do You Write Genetics. He's like, I got a glass guy out here. You know, we're not getting no China glass, Scotty. Okay. Um, so super cool to keep it within the crew. But dtudegrows.com forward slash shop man you got hats we still got some hoodies left ddc grow journal if you pick up the lighter bundle that those come with the ddc one hitter or go to the ddc cup and you'll get the lighter bundle handed to you when you come into judge 75 strains of animus uh, pins patches rolling trays thicker packs guys dtudegrows.com forward slash shop and as usual you producers get your coupon code log into patreon man i think we got you 20 percent off all merch so take advantage Remember, are you showing the merch? Yeah. Dude, you do a beautiful job with this. Look at all these, man. This is classy stuff. And that's a really nice. The, one of the things that doesn't get shown on them is the the internal lining is like silk cannabis leaves and all sorts of buds and stuff. So, yeah, these hats are very next level. Get one while you can. Oh, well, this one's actually got the tropical line. Oh, see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't, uh, you can't, you can't see them the there, but piece. yeah, the, the liners of these hats are sometimes the coolest things, man. Look at this baby. This is like one of the originals here. That's the Louis. Is that a Louis Vuitton? The original Louis. Oh. oh. Dude, I'm Dude, keeping they, these. are going to be worth tens of thousands of dollars one day, Scotty. They might be. Grambo. You never know. Who do you think the richest man in the world is? Well, on paper, it's Elon Musk, but it's actually, I think, the Sultan of Brunei? No, it's well, the, the ones they put on the news. Okay, Elon Musk just lost it to Jeff Bezos, and Jeff oh. Bezos just lost it to the guy that owns Louis Vuitton. No kidding? Yes. That's, that's how many purses he sold for five grand. Yes. Really? He, somebody, Bernard Arnault, Arnault oh, or something. yes, you're right. I heard that he name. He owns Louis Vuitton, man. Like, oh. What the? Wait, well, we, bigger than we Amazon? <laughs> yeah, right. Does your wife own? Does, does your wife own? Oh, no, Scotty. A Louis Vuitton? What? <laughs> I can't help what happens in Vegas. At least she didn't, uh, you know, bang a bartender. She just bought a Louis, man. All right, when she came over, she could have banged so. a Louis. <laughs> right. Yes, my wife has oh, one. Yes. About. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. One might be better than the other. I don't know. You choose your battles, man. You choose your battles in this world. So uh, um, my wife is shipping that. recharge as we speak right now in the warehouse. So shout out to Mrs. Real. <laughs> um, I know. I'm, I just bow out of these. I'm the guy that goes to Value Village to look for shiz. So me too. Yeah. Me too. No, I get them on Amazon now. All right. And then what my yeah. wife says about Value Village is funny in there. Like, no, that's a good smell. It's like your grandma's basement. <laughs> <laughs> it smells funny in there. Yeah. You don't even know who Cypress Hill is, do you, man? There's just four bucks. Yes. It's a city. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's How's a this? college. How much are already being ready in the tent? Um, so good one. You're happy. Oh, at John Keyhole. If, God, if you have problems with humidity, Get some ice and put it in the tent. Interesting. We'll keep it cool. Plus, add the humidity you want for a two by two tent. I use a six inch stainless stainless steel water dish for the one like for dogs or cats. Fill it up each day, and we'll be good. I do dry. Oh, for drying, fifty five, fifty five humidity and temp. Just the way I always done it. Interesting. So the ice, I guess, prevents it lasting it, even longer. It moistens it up. I mean, here I'm having a hard time keeping the humidity. It's true. In a two by four tent, you do something like that, it makes it humid. <clears throat> it also cools it down a little bit. 
If it's 65, 66 in the room and you can cool it down with a little ice, I don't know. I'm going to try it next time. I thought that was cool. Why not? You'll get the sweating effect, too, if you're using that stainless steel. I, I remember like that. that. That's part of the, or the, the help with it. Um, regarding IPM at ooh, ha, oh, 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 WNL 101. Oh, 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 Ooh, I don't know what up bugs. Uh, in. Excuse me. In I got bugs. you, man. Vince, I can take it. <laughs> yeah, all right. I got you, brother. I got you back. Yeah, I need bugs. Since adding ornamental tobacco to my grow, mites disappeared. Uh, that's quite interesting, sir. God, what is the is oh a neonicotoid? Yeah. All the neonicotoids are the nicotine is in there. It's like this little hunk of a little piece of nicotine in there, the one that kills the bugs. And so this doesn't surprise me. Oh, I like it. Yeah, I guess even just it's natural, it puts up a slight aroma, and they're like, "What the hell? Getting out of here?" Oh, that's that is Grambo. You're right. That's the one that's killing the honeybees. Yeah, you know, want to be, be careful putting that outside. Yeah, it's a it's one of those systemic pesticides too. I can't remember which one it is, but a, a perfect example, right? Of like people like, oh, it's all natural, man. It's like sometimes natural's bad. So but, nicotoids, very natural, but bad for the bees. But pulling it out of its uh its natural habitat, right. if you just put a tobacco right, plant in right. there, it's, it's like very the, well the could juice have. versus the fruit. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Good point, Scott. Thank you very much. Uh, gravity ball love. Should I get up? <laughs> on gravity ball from yes. Adams. Says, I have a glass gravity ball on my kitchen table. And in Maryland, we call it a GB. A yeah. quarter inch, six millimeter deep socket is the best. Oh, giving the socket size. Ah, that's awesome. Inch, six millimeter deep. All right. Make sure you get the quarter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious, right? Just the, I, I thought because it's just funny when you realize how universal your life experiences are. I thought just it was just me and my friends at Sears. We found a socket. We had yeah. we all have the same ideas. It's awesome. Grambo uses a seven millimeter though. Man. I mean, come on. Yeah, I use empirical. <laughs> come on, millimeters. Get out. Of here. I thought that was cool. I got this last one. Uh, this one is titled "We Are Not Lawyers, But." And what's the what's the username? Anonymous Mouse MC. <laughs> All right. Anon, Can cool. you bring hash and seeds back from Amsterdam to California? We are not lawyers, but uh, yeah, the answer is yeah. Oh, I brought <laughs> well, me a big box of edibles that have weed on them back from Amsterdam, man. Yeah, so. I left a comment on that yes. officially saying the dude grows policy is no yes. yes but but i can show you a half a dozen things they came and my wife's just like hey look i bought you souvenirs <laughs> he didn't right. consult on uh bring it yeah nobody nobody, nobody. <laughs> everything's nobody. cool until it's not All right uh, that's what i like about my wife so everything's cool man until it's not um before <laughs> The news, I will remind anybody that's growing the dank, go to our pros list, guys. Viewgrows.com forward slash pros. It's where all of our pros are listed. Yes, we stole it from Home Depot, but we know all of our pros. Uh, great people in the community to work with, great customer service, and good products to up yes. your grow game. All the coupon codes are listed from Seeds. We've got some smoking devices. Shout out to Dynavap. Seeds here now, AC Infinity, HLG, leaders in the industry, and ways to save money, dudros.com forward slash pros, where you can check all those out. You don't remember anything I'm saying about shout outs? They're all there. Yeah, They're go to Pulse Grow. Somewhere. Sorry, I was going to say Pulse Grow is very good VBD charts, man. Go check them out. You can learn a lot and from get, them. Get gifts for people that matter. Don't get, I don't know if you can pull off, like you probably can't get your wife like a card with a, like a, a Starbucks gift certificate or an Amazon. <laughs> like, I dare you. Know, you. Know. I dare you. <laughs> yes. For your 20th anniversary, oh. man. I bought you a Starbucks yeah. gift certificate. What? Well, you, you like it. In, you have a grower in your life or even help. Buy him a, a DGC membership at dudegrows.com forward slash support. We've done that. Now that's cool. a message. I got this for my husband. And lastly, I actually did a trail building day the other day. A, a guy showed up with this tool that I'm getting a trail building tool. He's like, my wife got this for me. I'm like, man, did you say, you know me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A trail building tool, Grambo. That's how yeah. BC, that's how deep into it 
dude is, man. <laughs> I got the DVD uh, collection of Rambo for my birthday. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> take it with a grain of salt. There's and then right be. before she, right before I opened it, she's like, do you like the Rambo movies? I was like, no, I hate them. I wish they'd stop making them forever. And dude, I opened it and her gift was Rambo. Blood. First Blood is amazing. First Blood is amazing. I got a second set of car mats for my <laughs> wife's car. I win. All right. You that was my Christmas present. You, all right. You win. <laughs> Wow. All right, so head in the news, what would you find, Scotty, here? Trending, trending news about the state of weed in the DEA. Yeah, don't worry about this, Grambo. This is a, a lockdown article, mm-hmm. but I just want to keep our eye on this. Uh, we talk about the big uh, takeover of cannabis and how we're hoping that they're not going to hand it just right over to Big Pharma. Uh, but this, they seem, <laughs> they, the secret group that controls the government, seems pretty smart. Not the real government, but the group that controls it. (laughs) And here's an article that showed up. This is Bloomberg Law, who is uh, Michael Bloomberg is one of the richest people in the world as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, The DEA can save the withering weed industry. Will it? And we all talk about the uh, cannabis industry that gave these licenses out to just about anybody. Uh, it turns and then he gave them such uh, unfair tax burdens that it's really hard to make a living in the weed industry. Now, there's a lot of people that are failing. And now what is big pharma going to come? I mean, uh, it, well, the DEA is going to open it up now. And make it much easier to do business with banking and whatever, yeah, interstate transport. And then they're going to be all the little people are going to be out of business. So Big Pharma is just going to come in and be like, hey, we'll swoop up these licenses or, you know, sure, we'll buy your customers. I did have a little more information out of marijuanamoment.net. Uh, the, the, the DEAs have an issue with the Health and Human Services. We're the one that recommended scheduling it, rescheduling it, I should say. Um, and they're talking about uh, issues related to THC potency, Scotty. They're worried about public harm. You know what I mean? Yeah, these are people that don't understand the laws that they, they're making laws regarding something that they have no understanding of, which is uh, it is a problem. It turns out that that can be a problem. I mean, we talked about uh, zombie apocalypse and things and drugs and stuff out in there in the scene and you can just look we're not gonna go down the rabbit hole talking about alcohol but they're worried about public harm come on man (laughs) when tequila exists yeah tequila going to mexico guys Uh, (laughs) grambo skip the next one and just go to the last one because uh you know they talk about cannabis and it can be really good for a bunch of disorders. Do you have your med card, Grambo? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Since day one, I moved here. And now my wife has a reason to get hers. Yeah, I mean, for the, it keeps you safe. It gets you better prices. You get better. You know, a funny thing about Colorado, they don't test uh, medical marijuana. All recreational marijuana is tested for, like, the pesticides and everything. Medical's not. It's a weird thing. So you're actually kind of in the Wild West here. It's fascinating. Are you, are you talking about this other article where states have to consider making... Female orgasmic disorder, a medical marijuana qualifying condition. Yeah. (laughs) Now, where? Where's it? (laughs) Year one forward. (laughs) There you go. Four four states states that crap. Oh, Hang on, let's just read this headline <laughs> loud and clear. Oh. Four states set to consider making female orgasmic disorder a medical marijuana qualifying condition. Huh. Huh. You don't so, say, huh? As long as you're female. Anybody can go and get their car with that, you know, condition. Just go in and although I think no, anymore. Sure. Hang on, in 2024, I'm pretty sure I could go in there and say I have female orgasmic disorder, and they'd be like, "We don't want any trouble, sir. Just take your card and go." <laughs> yeah. Um, they do have uh, data. You know, a clinical sexologist. What have titles? A clinical ologist. <laughs> I'm a non-clinical oh, sexologist. A non-clinical <laughs> sexologist. I just say it. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, so this sec- clinical sexologist, Mole Bayhill, points to research stretching back to the 70s that's been supported by more than recent studies indicating consuming marijuana in the four sex can increase the likelihood of orgasm or multiple orgasms, ease orgasm difficulty, and boost satisfaction, among other benefits. All right. I love when. Uh, you're breaking up, dude. But you're for it, right? It's not me. It's the lack of weed, honey. 
<laughs> wow. I'm going to use that. <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> yeah, you take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Let's look at a few. Uh, uh, let's say one more time. If you guys laughed, had a good time today, dudegrows.com forward slash support. If you're a grower, dividends pay for himself. Bring it. Got to take us to some social media here, some memes. What'd you get? You know, <laughs> yeah, first off, Grant, no, go to that picture, will you? This one? Yes. This is why they call it invagination, by the way. <laughs> that is a stomata opening up right there. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> by the way, so I was just bored, and I, I was Googling transpiration. And first off, Grambo, I, fa- I found this video. You would? All right. And do you trust somebody? See, if you can go to the very beginning of it. Do you trust somebody that says transportation in plants? Oh, no. As opposed to transpiration? <laughs> Oops. Like, right. Yeah. In the, yeah, right. I mean, the rest of it, you know, it's, it's pretty neat. It's just AI. Yeah, transportation in but plants. But it says transportation instead of transpiration. I'm like, how serious can I take the guy? <laughs> they And they were so close with Xylem. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, that's so what that's do just on the a, so it's just an AI video. Ooh. It looks good. Looks pretty. It does look pretty. There's some really good stuff. Asylum. Yeah, if you want to learn about how photosynthesis works and how uh, a plant just transpires and sucks up water, uh, you can learn a bunch from googling it. And there's all sorts of good videos. Yeah, Sim- Symbios, great channel. Check them out. Whoa! And look at all that surface area, man. Where's the hyphy? Next, Sorry. Next in the I, I got upset, man. I got upset. Oh, dude, look, this is what I think Canada's like. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? Huh? Oh, this is so <laughs> oh, my God. No. English, <laughs> Little but girl, don't. What is happening in here? You, you don't want four year olds doing cold is baths. She, I know. Is she going to break it and get in? I see water. Is this Wim Hof's baby mama? I don't know. Is this <laughs> fetish? I mean, yes. Oh, it's it's weird, I will right? tell you. It, it, yeah, Dude, uh, she's going to get uh, in that thing. I've, I've only owned a sauna the past year and a half or two of my life. And the hot and cold cycling is no. It is a feeling that you don't get. It's like a high, man. It's good to go. Good to go. Thumbs up. You give it Thumbs a, up. A high five. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. There's a baby in there, dude. I know. <laughs> What's happening? There is. She's praying in us all out. There's right? a beverage here, man. <laughs> oh, that's weird. That's weird. <laughs> that messed up my algorithm. Hey, there's some deep thinking right here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Do dolphins smoke weed like this? <laughs> or like this? Oh. Right? Which that's got tough. me. Can, can the, ask the interesting, can the blowhole suck? I don't know. Wow. I'm not letting you near Dolphin. <laughs> Here's how I think Dolphin smoke weed right oh, there, man. Mr. Ricky Williams. Very himself. clever. Very clever, sir. Thank very you. clever. I like this headline too. Ricky Williams smoked marijuana the night before games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, would, yeah man. Says Review the playbook. Get to get to bed early, go and relax a little bit. I'm sure you're nervous the night before a game. You gotta sleep well. Yeah, I like it. And it's, it's a great Photoshop <laughs> implying he was smoking on the field. He didn't do that. No. Hey, do me a favor, man. This next one. Do you guys hold your hit in? You know, I used to. I don't uh, anymore, especially not with dabs. Yeah. It says everyone thinks holding a hit in longer is going to result in a more intense high. <clears throat> but that's just not the case. Mm. Oh, THC and cannabinoids are absorbed within seconds of inhalation, meaning there's no reason to hold in that toad for a few seconds. Mm. Uh, anyway, the re- resulting light head experience after holding a puff for too long is not more intense. It's the brain <laughs> starving for oxygen. So breathe, people breathe. Yeah. This was on Facebook, which that's means so it's funny. true. They can't publish stuff that's not true on Facebook. Me and my friends right used to like smoke a joint before school. And we'd hold in our hits and then jog in place. Yeah, Theoretically, right. it's like, oh, we'll absorb more and be higher. And then you felt higher, but you're actually just oxygen starved. Dude, I cleaned my junk drawer and look what I found, man. Remember these? Oh, ro- the roach, roach clip. clips from the dentist. <laughs> I mean. As soon as the dentist would walk out. Yeah. Remember the alligator clips from the. 
I thing. was explaining to my kid that you'd smoke a roach and then you would go find like the roach in the ash. You'd smoke it down to the roach and then you'd find that roach in the ashtray and smoke it again. <laughs> That's prohibition. Anyone who ever smoked a joint of roaches. A roach joint. Respect. Yeah. Really? Do I get respect for that? <laughs> in retrospect. <laughs> it's so gross. It tastes like burning. It. Starve your brain of oxygen. Is that what a with it does? Yes, that is what it does, actually. Yeah, and those yeah. get you high, so yes, I don't know. <laughs> Somehow you found my inner monologue with this one. Uh, th- dude, this is how I see this everywhere I go. Grandpa. Yeah. That's this right on the other side here. That high C took that uh, right there, man. Yours kind of looks like an elephant. <laughs> It says, why is this drunk two-armed octopus trying to pick a fight with me? And that's how I, how high people get when they come hang out with me, because that's on the other side of this desk that's right so here. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's just a coat hook. <laughs> what do they call that? Perinelia, where you see faces and things? I believe. Oh, shoot, man. Love it. I tell you what, I am still not as high as James Brown on this interview. No I one always, is ever as high as James I have Brown. to revisit this. Just can we play it? tiny bit of it. Auntie joins us for, from Atlanta oh, to discuss the charges yes. and we welcome you, James Brown. How did all of this trouble begin? Live in America. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's wasted. <laughs> and he's responding to accusations Nothing that he's like done You're a lot of bad stuff. Yeah, this, he, this is his response. Beat his wife with a lead pipe, right? He goes, it's a man's world. Dropped? Yeah, I'm out of love. Oh. What's up? Are you out on love or out of love? Which is it? Out on love. Alone from night to night, you find me. Now, Tell James, me. this isn't the first time you and your wife have it's had a great, problem. Right? Are you going to be able to work this out? This is what I watch when I need to get it. You want to talk about music, and you don't want to talk about what happened. No, it's all over. Well, <laughs> sure. when are you leaving? We're leaving tomorrow. And where are you going? Dude, I just love it. You can watch as much or as little as you want, but I freaking love that. Nothing makes me laugh harder than James Brown just falling apart on TV. Yes. No. (laughs) No, That's that's old. I'm going to use that. Say it again. No, that's old. What he said, I don't want to. That's old. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I didn't catch what he said there. That, that's a good catch. You know, I used that when my week. wife asked me about a problem in our relationship or miscommunication. Like, I want to talk about that. <laughs> we oh got, we got to see what happens. Yeah, let's see. Hey, that's very interesting. Now, good. I feel good. I've got a brand new bag. It's a man world. <laughs> Well, that's the second time we've heard that in two days. That's very easy. Now, don't It's really a man's world. Oh, my yeah. God. He's talking. He's being interviewed oh about beating his God, wife. Dude. And he's just like, it's a man's world. Dude, this one is so good. Oh, it's great. Wow. Sonia live. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Grambo. Yes. I found your type finally, man. I finally found your type. I think these girls are too good for me. What do you do if you see that going on, man? I'd get married again. Yeah, it's over, Johnny. It's over. Can I marry both of you? Wow. There's so many right things about that picture. Uh, I, I want to make so many jokes that'll get us age gated. All right. Hey, <sighs> uh, never, that's a good one. I, I searched how to grow cilantro microgreens. I'm wanting to get into cilantro microgreens. And the first most watched video popped up as a, you know, pretty, uh, like a pretty, pretty, I'll be use that. <laughs> blonde woman explaining it and it has the most views as the first one suggested and of course i knew my wife when she comes in she's like oh i see why you picked this one i'm like i didn't pick it you two picked it okay? uh, that's why everyone that. picks it <laughs> anyway that's what i got man older guys if you're still hanging you should be subscribe check out all of our shows check out our lives on monday for 20 pacific time uh, don't forget if you're a producer, we got the 420 happy hour every Friday, Saturday show. If you just want to hang, start your Saturday day, right? I got our Saturday show. We'll be coming at you. So stay tuned. Uh, the dude grows, man. Take her easy. Stay higher. Thanks, Grambo. Scotty, peace out. Tight work, Grambo. Tight work, dude. Yeah. Until the next time, take her easy. Take it easy. See you on Saturday. All right. <laughs> <laughs>